Two Wheeled Fanatics and welcome to episode 11 of A Bike and a Beer, the show where every Saturday I feature an incredible vintage motorcycle while drinking an appropriately paired beer. Today we're looking at a 1971 Norton Commando 750. Man these bikes are cool and sometimes on this show you can actually buy the bikes. Today is one of those days. Oh yeah! If you watch this video and it gets you fired up on Norton Commandos and you got a hanker and to own one, you can buy this bike right here. I'm going to put all my contact information in the description as well as a link to the listing and you can buy this bike. Make sure you get on it before somebody else does. Okay, what beer to go with this bike? Well, I was down at the beer shop and uh, this one caught my eye because of the color and then I saw it was called Bike Dog Brewing Co. so that checked out and this particular beer is called Hi-Fi Gods which made me think about the sound and if you've never heard of Norton Commando uh, we're gonna fire it up here today and you'll hear it but it has a very distinct sound very throaty and strong coming out of these pea shooter pipes so it just seemed like a good beer for it let's see what it tastes like oh yeah tastes like an IPA and that's what it is it's a West Coast IPA these guys are actually in West Sacramento, so not too far from here. Nice beer. Norton Commandos are near and dear to my heart. It was my very first British bike. I bought it from a neighbor who was clearing out a bunch of stuff, basically for the cash in my pocket and a 12-pack of Heineken. Those were the good old days. Um, and the bike was crashed. I mean, it was crashed in the early 80s, and it basically needed everything except for the motor. I got the motor runner pretty quickly and easily, so that got me real inspired. And I went through the rest of the bike. It turned out to be an amazing experience where I got to meet a bunch of cool Norton guys. I got to meet Ken Arman, who's the San Francisco Bay Area Norton guy, and uh, get hooked up with all those friends and just learn a ton. It was really my first uh, opportunity to immerse myself in British motorcycles. Uh, which obviously I'm still doing. These bikes just handle incredibly well. They might be the best handling British motorcycle on the road. As you can see in the intro video, the bike is very strong and, and capable. You can go on a lively ride two up and have a wonderful time as you saw. Um, I also took my kids for a couple of joyful rides on this bike and they actually loved it as well as uh, delivering a package. So I've been getting a lot of use out of this bike for the week that it's been running. But um, it didn't take much to bring it back. I bought it from a really nice gentleman. The bike belonged to his father. Hadn't been ridden in some time, but was in great shape. This bike's actually a 750, but it's been bored out to an 800. Um, it took the basic revival stuff to get it back going. Carb clean, valve check, replaced all the fluids. Um, and it fired up second kick. A little bit of tuning and it's been running flawlessly. And I've ridden it every single day. I ride it multiple times a day, to be honest with you, because it's just so dang fun and it's there. Horton is another one of those really old British manufacturers. Founded in 1898 by James Norton. By 1902, they were actually producing motorcycles. Like most manufacturers, they would produce basically a rolling chassis and then buy the power plants from a different company like JAP or Peugeot. Just five years after that, in 1907, they won the inaugural race of the Isle of Man TT. Pretty impressive. That was a Peugeot power Norton. And then just a year after that, in 1908, they actually produced their own motor. During World War I, they were heavily restricted on producing bikes, so that was a bit of a slow period. But in uh, World War II, they produced over 100,000 motorcycles for the British war efforts. After that, they really focused on performance machines and racing. And they have quite an impressive race history, including winning the Isle of Man TT every year from 1947 to 1954. And they just produced iconic model after iconic model. The Manx, the Manx Man, the Atlas. And then in the late 60s, we got to these fantastic machines. Now, the Norton brand has almost died and actually died about a million times. They've been bought, merged, renamed more times than you can count. And they're actually technically in production today. Um, so <laughs> they've had a fettered history, but no one can let the Norton brand die. It's just too iconic. It's too special. And I'm thankful for that. In 1967, Norton needed something big. And man, they came up with it. At the Earl's Court show, they unveiled 
the Norton Commando 750. And it didn't look quite like this. This is a 71 Roadster. In 67, it looked a bit different. The tank was a different shape. The seat kind of winged out over here. It was a pretty radical looking bike for the time. Um, very interesting styling. The motor, I mentioned the Atlas model. The motor is a 750 Atlas model, essentially just tilted forward a bit, which they claimed helped with weight distribution and improved handling. It also had a more modern look, which was a benefit as well. And this is a pre-unit motor, which if you're unfamiliar means that the motor and the gearbox are separate. Something that the other big British manufacturers, BSA and Triumph, had got rid of in the early 60s. So this was uh, kind of an old technology, but Norton just clung on to it. And it's pretty cool, actually. Norton Commandos were produced from 67 to 77, and it was a pre-unit the entire time. In 73, they bumped it up to what they called an 850. It was actually just 828 cc's. They also added an electric start later, which was nice and definitely needed because Japanese manufacturers did that way earlier. You could get it in a bunch of different models. It started out as a fastback with kind of a boat tail. And then in the early 70s, they developed the Roadster, which is this trim package. Um, there was an SS which was produced. They made an interstate which had a giant, I think, six gallon tank on it. Um, so you could get this bike in a lot of different ways, but the heart was always the same. The frame and motor were the same. Now the real magic lies in the ice elastic system. When they were developing this bike, they realized that a 750cc parallel twin put out a good amount of vibration. So they wanted to mitigate that for the rider, and they developed this system where the motor, the gearbox, and the rear swing arm are all isolated from the frame via rubber bushings. Now these rubber bushings are specialized and they need to be shimmed properly. When done so, the bike handles amazingly well. But you need to stay on top of it. If you let them wear out or if they're shimmed improperly, they'll scare the hell out of you because that rear end will fishtail on you and it usually does it right about when you're in the apex of the turn at full lean. And that'll make you pucker in a way that you won't soon forget. Norton Commandos have 19 inch rims front and rear and that's one of the things I actually corrected on this bike. It had an 18 inch rear, a nice rim, a Barani, which is fine and it obviously opens up your options for tire choices but I just like things stock and original. I put brand new tires on, I like Dunlop K70s, I put the same size on front and rear because I feel like it makes a well balanced look. So these are 350 by 19s front and rear. This is an 8 inch twin leading shoe front drum. Beautiful design, well ventilated, very, very unique to Norton. Alloy fenders front and rear as well. These forks are called road holder forks and they're actually carried over from the previous generation, the Atlas Norton. So these frames are a duplex style frame, which means there's two bars coming down from the steering neck. They have a really large backbone, which is also unique to Norton. Of course, the 750cc parallel twin, putting out 60 horsepower. This bike did the ton, no problem. Points are in here. This bike has been upgraded to a Boyer Branson electronic ignition. These are Norton gearboxes. Their shifters on the right. It's one up, three down, uh, aftermarket K&N air filter. These are called Z plates and they mount the foot pegs for both the rider and the pillion. These are called pea shooter pipes, slightly upswept. The only bike that has this is a Norton. So you can spot a Norton like that. This seat is an original seat in excellent condition. This luggage rack, I thought about taking it off about four times, but it's really practical. It's a Wassel product. So it's cool and it's period correct. So I left it. The oil tank is behind this cover. In order to fill it or check it, you unscrew these, which are nice big knobs that you can unscrew by hand, pull the seat off, and you can top off the oil. Mid-height bars that make for a really comfortable riding position with Gran Turismo grips. Twin Amel carburetors feed this motor. They're originally equipped with 30 millimeter concentrics. This bike has been upsized to 932s, so 32 millimeter carbs, probably because the motor was bored out to an 800 and they felt it might be necessary. Clutch on this bike is a diaphragm clutch. It's a chain driven primary. Seven inch drum on the rear works great. Norton Commandos have fiberglass tanks, which some people love, some people hate. They can be a bit of a pain, but this one's been sealed properly, so it's working quite well. Now this bike is 50 years old, and it looks like it's 50 years old. I like that. 
I like the little bit of chips in the paint and a little bit of light rust here and there. It all adds to the character and it's all earned. This bike earned that. All right, folks, I think it's time to fire this thing up. Let you know what a Norton Commando sounds like. What do you think? Let's do it. Okay, Petcock's on. Let the juices flow. Give her a good tickle, both sides. Ignition on. Let's see if she goes. Folks, that seems like a good time to bring this episode to a close. 1971 Norton Commando, available for purchase. Beautiful bike. I don't want to sell it, but I don't want to sell any of them. So what else is new? Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't subscribed, feel free to do so. Bottom corner right there. If you have already, again, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. We'll be back next week with a whole new bike and a whole new beer. Thank you so much, folks. Cheers.